Hi, Jeff Spivak, Democrat and Chronicle, with Ward Stair, musical director of the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. American Music Festival, there's three of them. It's October 23rd, October 27th, and November 3rd. And Ward, this looks like a really complicated lineup. Things are bouncing around, different kinds of music. On the October 23rd show, David Diamond, Gershwin, and Copeland. You knew Diamond. I did, yeah. Yeah, he grew up, uh, well, he did grow up in Rochester, and so did I, and not at the same time, though, of course. Uh, but when I was in high school, um, I had a, actually one of my uh, high school teachers, English teacher, knew him and knew I, you know, was really interested in music and mentioned that he knew David Diamond. And I thought, oh, my God, I didn't realize he was in Rochester, but I had read about him in all these biographies, you know, because he was part of the whole scene with Aaron Copeland, Leonard Bernstein, and just, you know, who's who of, of American classical music in the last century. Uh, and so I was thrilled that I got to actually meet him while I was in Rochester. I even took a composition lesson with him once or twice, mm -hmm. and that was, <laughs> that was very fascinating and humbling. So was he kind of crazy? I, I wouldn't call him crazy, but he was very intense. I mean, yeah. uh, and it was the first time I'd ever been uh, in someone's home where they had so many books in so many different languages, and uh, he was just, he was really a, a man of the world and so, so knowledgeable and so, so great. I mean, he, he was really something that okay, inspired how, me a lot. How's this piece that he's done? How the, there's five pieces on that particular show. Right. How they all fit together? Well, two of them have a Rochester connection, the Diamond, of course, and then the Rouse, Iscariot, um, uh, was composed while he was at Eastman, so mm -hmm. it was 1989, right in Fairport, he did that piece. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to do was uh, show a huge variety in American music because that's that's kind of one of the themes of this festival that we're putting on is there's just so many different elements so many different styles uh, so much that goes into the American musical sound and so this first program sort of gives us a sampling of that because you have everything from you know Gershwin's very simple sweet lullaby which is very charming but you know it's a lullaby there's nothing mm -hmm. too complicated about it uh, and the, the diamond is also very accessible uh, very you know friendly high energy. The Copeland is, uh, is more, you know, quintessential frontier pastoral beauty. Uh, and the Rouse is actually rather dark, believe it or not. So it's a huge contrast. Uh, and then in between that, we also have a piece by Alan Fletcher called If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler, which is a, a, a great piece because um, uh, it was actually a co-commission with Bill Morrison, who does mm -hmm. a film. And the film, I'm really thrilled about this because I've done a lot of work with film before, but I've always been bound by the time clock or by the code, you know, and having to sync up with the film. Well, now it works in reverse, so the film actually can follow me, which you're, is very you're, cool. So you're showing the film. That's right. So we're going to have the film and the music, and it, it works uh, in perfect sync, but I don't have to worry about watching the clock. I can just make music, which is great. And it's also based on a book by Italo Calvino. That's right. And it's, have you read it? I haven't read the book, It's no. really nutty. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's a mind game. Right. Um, in fact, I think the opening uh, of it is something like uh, you're reading the, the book by Italo Calvino, and, and then it keeps shifting around. Is, right. And it's hard to follow. Is, is the piece like that as well? The piece is not, well, you know, when I was talking to Alan about it, he was telling me about the story, and he said that it fit kind of perfectly with his, I, what happened with the piece, because he thought he was going out in a certain direction, and then he found that you know, once the piece started flowing, he wound up in a totally other place. So in that sense, I think it does follow that yeah. sort of erratic train of thought, you know, like mm -hmm. the novel. Uh, when you program other RPO shows, are they as diverse? Are they as diverse? As this. Um, I always try for, for a nice variety, um, but I think probably all of the programs on the American Music Festival are maybe the most diverse that we've done so far. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just such a huge range of styles and sounds. Is that easy to acceptable for the RPO audience in general? I think, I think people are going to love it because they're going to get to hear so many different things in the course of one evening. It's not, I mean, th there's a, definitely a certain charm to hearing a, an all, you know, high classical period concert with Mozart and Beethoven and Haydn. Um, but when you come to an event like this and you get to hear pieces like this, you really, you get to know the, the orchestra, I think, more intimately because mm -hmm. we really, you know, give them a workout in so many different ways. Uh, and I think you, your sensibilities, I mean, you, you get more stimulation from, from different areas when you hear a concert that's got so much variety on it. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know if anybody actually has record collections anymore, <laughs> you know, this being digital age. But I don't know anybody whose music collection is, is one thing, right. like classical or blues. Right. Uh, what's yours look like? Same. It's very eclectic. I mean, I have everything from, you know, old historic records up to modern day releases and everything in between. I like jazz, I like 
big band. I like uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, classic rock kinds of things. I mean, I like opera. I like everything. You have Journey in your collection? I think I might, actually, yeah. Believe it or not. Um, <laughs> I even have I even have a couple hip hop albums, believe yeah, it or okay, not. No, I so. play that. Uh, <laughs> were you always a classical guy or did you play in rock bands? I actually played, uh, I was a trombone player you know, growing up in Rochester and so I played um, with a lot of bands. I played with a, like a 70s band, I played with a swing band, I played in jazz ensembles and with jazz groups and I played back up uh, in a couple rock shows. I actually, when I was in Chicago, I played with uh, Peter Cetera and Dennis D. Young for these uh, <laughs> tapings that we did. So yeah, I've done quite a quite a variety myself. Mm -hmm. uh, as he's new, uh, is there plans to expand this American Music Festival to maybe a, a yearly thing? Well, that would be very exciting for me. We'll see how it goes. I mean, uh, there are only so many slots in a given concert yeah. year for us to fill, and there's a lot of other music that I want to perform too. Um, but I think American music is important for us in Rochester also because. Rochester has been an important city on the American musical map ever since George Eastman founded the school and the orchestra. Uh, and so I wanted to pay homage to that and also you know, remind us that uh, we have an important place in American musical history right here in Rochester. And it, mm -hmm. it sort of reaffirms uh, uh, you know, our identity as a great American orchestra too, which mm -hmm. is very important to do. Yeah. All right. Okay, three nights of the American Music Festival. Uh, you can read more about it on democraticchronicle.com. Thanks.